In Amazonia, each year, a miraculous resurrection takes place. A submerged kingdom, lying beneath 10 meters of water, rises to the surface. This is the story of the land's victory and of the changing fortunes of its creatures the subjects of the annual battle between Earth and water. Each year, the greatest river on Earth drowns beneath a vast, steely mirror. Thin ribbons of jungle, like floating islands in the sky, hint at the world beneath the water's surface, just waiting to be reborn. Floods have reached their pinnacle, but the mighty water wheel, which drives life and death in Amazonia, continues to turn. A revolution has begun in the warring worlds of the Amazon. Below, a drowned forest silently awaits its rebirth. It's not the wind, but the river's receding waters which strain the highest branches. In this parallel universe, no birds sing. But fish of every color, shape, and size flit mutely through the boughs. Strange, delicate baskets dangle underwater, not to catch fish, but to one day ensconce the eggs of the South American weaver bird once the floods recede. The giant otter's den lies dormant under five fathoms of water. But next year's young will play and tussle on these very banks.
One day soon, beneath this jungle canopy, a jaguar will stalk an anxious deer. Monkeys will witness the struggle from the trees above. Like the phoenix, this silent, watery world will come alive once again. A floating frontier divides the realms of land and water, and the creatures must navigate both to survive. In Amazonia, the most unlikely creatures can swim, and swim surprisingly well, in their own ways. The burrowing armadillo seeks out a treetop perch to check for danger. Its quick, efficient stroke, and not its body armor, will protect it from the jaws of a hungry jaguar. A sloth emerges to find a comfortable place in the trees. It's one of the few land mammals that can actually move faster in the water than on ground. The long wait is over. The floods of the wet season begin to abate and the waters start to recede. Across Amazonia, the inland seas yield to dry land. The greatest river system in the world is draining. The tops of the trees stretch into blue sky and sunshine caresses their leaves for the first time in weeks. In the Amazon, the trees have adapted to survive the long, wet season underwater. Now, eager settlers return to their homes among the branches. Already, a few inches above the falling river's surface, a tiny jewel-like hummingbird sits on its thimble-sized nest in a newly colonized palm. The sharp spines of the trunk provide protection for the miniature brood. dominance between water and land, the forest now gains the upper hand. The victory touches every creature, large and small. forest floor far beneath, the withdrawal of the waters alters the face of the wilderness. For herbivores, the newly liberated land means increasing opportunities to forage for food. The yellow-rumped caciques can now reclaim their nests. This colony returns to the same roost as last year. After several months of water damage, 
their homes require some serious renovation. Recycling is essential to the remodeling process. When the females can, they will use a partially built nest and won't hesitate to borrow building materials from an absent neighbor. Despite such appropriations, the elaborate abodes should be completed in time for the breeding season to begin. As their name suggests, piratic flycatchers have earned a notorious reputation for stealing nests. Unless promptly evicted, the squatters will probably take over the entire colony. The cacique males now go about the important business of attracting a partner by puffing up their plumage and showing off their remarkable vocal range. They are some of Amazonia's most gregarious and conspicuous inhabitants. They are gifted ventriloquists. A single bird can sound like a chorus. They are said to be able to imitate the territorial roar of a jaguar. As the dry season continues to redraw the map, animals stake new claims and patrol new boundaries. Hunters stay on the lookout for potential prey. At five and a half meters long, this female anaconda could take on any jaguar. Anacondas can grow up to nine meters in length. They use pressure, not poison, to kill their prey. Their coiled body squeezes a victim so tightly that circulation ceases and life ebbs away. As food becomes scarce, desperate measures are called for. The jaguar probes for signs of hidden life in the riverbed. Some fish hide in the mud during the day and come out only at night. Although the jaguar prefers to dine on larger prey, such as monkeys, deer and tapirs, this unfussy feline will settle for a catfish. Jaguars are the only big cats which routinely kill their prey by sinking their large canines into its skull. The jaguar's powerful jaws are even capable of splitting open the shell of a tortoise. But it can also chew delicately to avoid any sharp bones. All across Amazonia, animals reclaim emerging environments once submerged by the waters. 
the rare, giant otters return to their holts or burrows in this reborn world. While the retreating waters benefit some, they also dispossess others. The South American manatee spends a few days browsing on the grasses beneath the vanishing backwaters. Soon, four-legged creatures will graze in its place. In Amazonia's annual battle of the elements, Earth is now gaining ground. The water meadows of the dry season make the Amazon a favorite destination for all kinds of migrant birds. Many come from far away, even as far as Greenland, drawn to the lush variety of insects, fish, and fruit-bearing trees. Just one of the many visiting globetrotters, the sandpiper, flies down from the Canadian Arctic to the warm climate of Amazonia every year. seasonal brooks and streams continue to disappear. The biggest basin in the world is emptying, 175,000 litres per second. Even in the deeper main channels, the water levels drop. These are increasingly rivers of sand and mud. Beneath the surface, River dolphins have begun to evacuate the area. If they're cut off from the main channels, they will die. Yet the botos, or pink river dolphins, face a tantalizing decision. The falling rivers create great concentrations of fish. But if they hunt for too long, they risk being cut off from their escape routes to the main channels. themselves to consider. The fate of tomorrow's generation travels with them. Welling up like the foundations of some lost Atlantis, the underlying structures of the Amazon now emerge. Dolphins have disappeared. The waters recede rapidly. The pools have become barren. 
Now, the scavengers will feast. High above, vultures soar on the thermals. Nothing escapes their attention. Their keen sense of smell helps them find their next meal. As consumers of carrion, they have adapted perfectly. Bacterial microbes in their intestines help them fight off even the most potent of toxins, including botulism. Like a convention of rival undertakers, three types of vulture vie for the deceased, a large piranha. While the other vultures take their turn, a black vulture airs his impressive funereal wings. This show was created for you and your family to watch together. Welcome to Nacho Wild. In the dry season, there is no shortage of work. The larger king vulture need not stand on ceremony or exercise the same patience. His presence intimidates the others, but because he has no sense of smell, he has to rely on the other vultures to find food. Back in the steamy jungle, a female jaguar is in season. But in the expanding rainforest of the dry season, finding a suitable partner can be as uncertain as finding the next meal. Single, highly secretive female, desperately seeking equally solitary, secretive male for short-term relationship. How do you place such a personal ad in the rainforest? Sound is one way, though her hoarse messages of desire can only carry so far. Smell is another. By leaving signals in her urine, she not only defines her boundaries, but lets her potential suitors know she is ready to receive them. Her message is clear. No monkey business, no lolling around. After the briefest of courtships, they get down to business. They mate up to a hundred times a day. A few seconds is all it takes. Their romance will last for only a few brief days. Hardly the most attentive of fathers, the male will disappear back into the rainforest long before the cubs are born in about three months' time. In the dangerous hide-and-seek world of Amazonia, smell discreetly attracts a mate. Anacondas cannot roar like the jaguar, but a lone female anaconda can entice not just one male, 
but a dozen from the far reaches of the forest. When she's ready to breed, she leaves an inviting chemical trail and the males come calling. First one, then another. And another. And another. She entertains all of them at her mating ball. Up to a dozen males attempt to couple with her simultaneously. And they may stay enmeshed for up to a month. It's thought that despite all the slithering and confusion, the female can actually decide which male will fertilize her eggs. The eggs then hatch inside her body, and in six months, she will bear live young. In the struggle for existence, the fate of an individual is like a mere leaf on a tree. Yet each individual plays a small role in the forest's survival. High in the canopy stands a lofty Brazil nut tree. At first glance, it has little in common with the lowly agouti at its feet, making off with its fallen fruit. But the agouti is one of the few rodents in the forest whose strong teeth can gnaw through the hard, woody exterior in order to get at the cluster of familiar seeds inside. The agouti likes to hoard. What it doesn't eat now, it saves for later. By hoarding these nuts, it unwittingly serves not only its own ends, but those of the tree as well. It marks a spot near its cache. Soon the agouti's scent attracts unwanted attention. The fusion of scents baffles the jaguar, but another prowler joins the chase. From Alaska in the north to Tierra del Fuego in the south, the puma ranges more widely than any other cat in the Americas.
Whether the hunter is a jaguar or a puma, the agouti's fate is the same. Hidden and forgotten, the Brazil nut, which the agouti unlocked and buried, now stands a chance of germinating. In another hundred years, it may be a tree towering over a rainforest clearing of its own. In the Amazon, opportunism is the secret to survival. The coming of night provides another set of possibilities for the jaguar. Its finely honed senses allow it to hunt as effectively by night as by day. It gets its name from the Indian word for he who kills with one leap. While other big cats run down their prey with bursts of speed, the jaguar relies on ambush. Stealth and the crushing strength of its powerful jaws have taken it to the top of the predatory pyramid. An unending drama plays out variations on the theme of cat and mouse, every minute of every night and every day. Simply searching for the next meal means risking being someone else's. Predators lurk everywhere. The lancehead, one of Amazonia's most poisonous snakes, strikes with lightning speed and lethal venom. It samples the air with its tongue. The mouse's daring escape is short-lived. In the jungles of Brazil, giant spiders as big as dinner plates take on a range of prey, from birds and snakes to insects. Tarantulas hunt mainly on the ground using tripwires, and because of poor eyesight, they use hairs on their legs, which link directly to their nervous system to detect the slightest vibration. It launches an initial attack, injecting poison through hollow fangs to stun the mouse quickly. It can't chew, so it will liquefy the body before sucking it dry. In the struggle for existence, millions of creatures deploy different strategies for survival and fill every available niche.
The complex liaisons in this constantly changing world choreograph the rainforest's intricate dance of life and death. Bats make up almost half of all mammal species in Amazonia. They total over 900 species, of which at least a dozen share this single cave. As a group, bats are opportunists. As individual species, they are specialists. They are the only mammal in the world that can truly fly. And some use a form of sonar or echolocation to catch insects and avoid obstacles. But each species has its own peculiar strategy for survival. As the relative safety of the night falls, the bats prepare to leave the roost and forage in the waiting forest. A vast outdoor buffet awaits. Flying low over the water and trailing its feet on the surface, the fishing bat scoops up its prize. Others snatch frogs. Razor sharp teeth allow the infamous vampire to enjoy a meal of fresh blood. Others live on fruit, in this case, a fallen Belusia. But spending too long on the ground draws unwanted attention. The bright-eyed Marguet spends most of its life in the trees, rarely venturing to the ground. Specially adapted hind feet allow it to descend head first. Disappointingly, it's only an unappetizing frog. Any cat would prefer a more mouse-like morsel. The succulent fruit makes this diner oblivious to the danger. A specialist, perhaps, but the Marguet seizes the opportunity and a hot meal. The canopy shelters the Earth's richest and most diverse ecosystem. Insects make up over 90% of the animals in the Amazon. Two and a half square kilometers of forest can house over 50,000 insect species. But its very richness is also its greatest paradox. The seemingly endless woodland boasts over 300 species of trees in one hectare. But miraculously, the jungle giants such as this, among the tallest trees on earth, grow in remarkably poor soils. The rate of tree growth in the central Amazon is also among the slowest of any forest on earth due to nutrient poor soil and low light conditions on the forest floor.
From the centuries long rise and fall of one of these mighty trees to the annual ebb and flow of the floodwaters and the briefest 24-hour birth and reproduction of an insect, thousands of cycles of regeneration continue to breathe life into the rainforest itself. Billions of leaves in the forest canopy act like miniature solar panels, trapping sunlight and converting it into energy via photosynthesis. Recycling of that precious energy begins down on the surface of the soil below where the dead and decomposing go back to the earth. This is probably the tightest and most efficient recycling operation in nature. It is also a fragile one. All of the animals play their part in recycling energy and nutrients. The giant anteater vacuums up the hard bodies of leafcutter ants. Entirely vegetarian, the tapir plays its part in the recycling effort by consuming thousands of leaves every day. It's the largest land herbivore of Amazonia. Tapirs digest very little of their food. Rich in chopped fibers and fruit seeds, their voluminous droppings are quickly claimed by industrious dung beetles who eat their fill and then pair up to bury their newfound treasure. The process of rolling and burying dung is part of their courtship. If all goes well, they will lay their eggs in this nutritious dung and the cycle will begin again. It's a pattern that's repeated in astonishing ways throughout the web of life. One particular species of inventive bug is as industrious as the dung beetles. These diminutive farmers obtain compost without having to make it themselves. These ants utilize the waste of a plant eater. Not a tapir, but the droppings of a caterpillar. They travel enormous ant distances in search of this prized commodity to use it as fertilizer. Other leaf cutter ants engage in the time-consuming business of collecting and composting leaves themselves. But inside the chambers of this farm, the ready-made manure from the caterpillar allows the ants to cultivate a fungus that they will eat.
This pattern of interdependence and recycling of resources repeats itself throughout the forest. Even jacamines, or trumpeter birds, named for their extraordinary call, need to swallow tough objects to grind up their food. So too, the Ormosia tree needs its seed pods broken before they can germinate. The Ormosia gains the services of the Jacamine, not to just disperse its seeds more widely, but more importantly, once the seeds have journeyed through the bird's gizzard, the seed pods have been broken and the shoots can now sprout. Once the seeds have journeyed through the bird's gizzard, the seed pods have been broken and the shoots can now sprout. Not just dependence, but mutual advantage binds the plants and animals together. They give and take life from each other in one of the most complex and diverse ecosystems on Earth. The spectacle of birth, death, and regeneration plays out daily by millions upon millions of plants and animals. All around, the stunning variety of life testifies to nature's creative powers. The forest is sunlight and water transformed into life-giving matter. Here, in Amazonia's tropical rainforest, the floodwaters must die so that the life-giving land can emerge once again. This is the annual miracle of the land reborn. Thank <laughs> you.